Welcome, everybody, to Pros and Joes Talking Friends or Foes, Episode 9. I am Jim Cross. I am rolling solo because we're doing a daytime episode, but we got guests Wyatt Short and Dallas Wolfolk, former Ole Miss Rebels. How are we doing today, Dallas? Uh, we're doing well. Glad to be on the show. Thank you for having me, and uh, can't wait to talk about some things that uh, happened at Ole Miss. Oh, uh, no doubt. Wyatt, how are we doing? I'm doing great over here, man. Uh, I appreciate you having me on. This is a uh, first time for me, so I'm excited to be here. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to start with you, Wyatt. You know, obviously, you know, of the 20 guests that have come on uh, Friends or Foes, they have been in off the bench podcast guests. So you'd be the first one um, that wasn't. So I just want to get a quick little story on you. Just want to know where you're from and ultimately why it was you chose Ole Miss to play baseball. I'm from uh, South Haven, Mississippi. Um, went to South Haven High School. Uh, honestly, growing up, I was a big Ole Miss fan. And playing baseball growing up, I didn't expect to play past high school, to be honest. Um, didn't realize that I had a good arm until until high school. And, uh, you know, got an offer late my junior year and obviously took it because dream school and you know, what better place to go than Ole Miss? You know, great atmosphere, fantastic fans, um, love the coaching staff. Uh, there was just a bunch of pros close to home, only an hour away from home. So, yeah, there's a bunch absolutely. of – You know, it's funny you say South Haven. When you look up your profile, and this is for most guys uh, from this area, it, it bothers the mess out of me. It says you're from Memphis. I like how they can't give North Mississippi any credit. Like, it's still got uh, – you know, they call Austin Riley Memphis's own. Dallas knows about that. And it's like, no, he's not. <laughs> so, it, it's funny. How, it's funny. As soon as you said South Haven, that was the first thought that comes to me because when you pull up your player profile, it says Memphis, Tennessee. That's funny because my family gives me gives me all kinds of crap about it too. They're like, make sure you tell them to fix it. You're from South Haven, <laughs> not Memphis. They don't. They don't want to give the tip of the, They don't want to give the tip of the sip any credit. It's all good though. We know <laughs> exactly. So Dallas, it's been a minute since you were on, man. But the last time we had you on, man, you know, we found out for your closest friends you like to dig graves and whatnot, man. You ain't done anything like that for Wyatt, have you? No, no. Me and Wyatt were uh, good friends in uh, college. You know, he was an upperclassman, so coming in as, as a freshman, you try to try to get in the loop with how things work, how, how you should act, how you should go about your business. And uh, Wyatt was definitely one of those guys that you looked up to because um, just the person he was and the way he went about his business, his work ethic. And he was a great person on and off the field. So I definitely looked up to him. So there was definitely no, no digging graves for him. <laughs> yeah, no, it was interesting. And uh, two episodes ago, two episodes ago, we had Landon Sims and Logan Tanner on. And Landon Sims talked about how Justin Foskey, uh, when he came in as a freshman, was razzing him, and he was in the shower and told him he was just so easy to hit off of. And I was like, oh, <laughs> that's the kind of stuff that gets you a, a grave, Doug. Man, he said yeah. he, he said he can't wait for the opportunity to face him in the pros if he gets it. So. Yeah, but, but glad, but glad to know that you're not that you're not digging graves for my no, guy no, no. here. No, <laughs> white, white good person. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you know, I saw the video of you throwing a base pitching man. Obviously, last time we talked to you, you, obviously going through TJ. Where are you at in the recovery process? Are you fully recovered? What's going on? Uh, yeah, I'm fully recovered. Uh, I finished TJ round right at a year, so. I was in Arizona through two uh two innings in um in the fall and they was like, Yeah, you're you're ready to go. So I got sent home for the off season and I've just been preparing for spring training ever since. Arm feels amazing. Um I can't thank the the doctors, the trainers for, for the A's for taking good care of me, listening to me if I had a problem. Um it was it was an experience that I, I love because I if I knew if I did it right that I would come back stronger and healthier so i've enjoyed it it's been fun i'm glad you used the word stronger you're not still in the gym like pushing those 120s dumbbells are you i am not but i can still do that <laughs> why why I, i'm working out at the DAC every day same time as, as dallas and i one day i walked by and i was like you do realize you're a baseball player right like my, my guy's in there lifting like he's trying to be on the d-line of an nfl team <laughs> hey Strength, uh, strength and power and incorporates to velocity a lot of times. So we got to maintain that flexibility too. 
Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. So Wyatt, for you, man, uh, you know, we talked to Dallas on his episode about being drafted. Um, you were drafted in the 13th round by the Chicago Cubs. You know, talk to us about that day. You know, where were you? Who were you with? What was it like getting that phone call? Um, I was at home in South Haven. You know, my parents have moved since then, but um, I was there at home and I was actually playing video games because I'm sure Dallas will tell you the same thing. The stress of the draft, knowing you might get picked, is insane. It is like any nothing else I've ever experienced, that's for sure. Um, so the first two days, even though I knew day one there was no chance, and day two there was a very small chance, um, I was still super stressed. So I tried to take my mind off of things. So I played video games. And uh, I was actually playing um, – Call of Duty, I can't remember which Call of Duty, but uh, I think it was the remastered Modern Warfare 1. Um, and I was playing that, and I had already gotten a few calls from, from teams before, but no, nobody picked me up. And I went into the kitchen for a snack and got a call from uh, my Cubs scout, and he was like, hey, we just got you in the 13th. It wasn't like a, hey – we're thinking about getting you. It was, we just picked you in the 13th. Right. I was like, Oh, okay. It's like, all right, I'll call you later for more details. It's yeah. Like, all right. It's well. interesting these stories. And I, I think you went about it the right way because we've talked to some guys who did sit around and wait and the stress did become overwhelming and, and to a degree painful because they went later than they thought they would, or they were told that they would, you know, got multiple phone calls saying you're going to probably go here, but then they go rounds later. And so, you know, you know, whether it was you playing video games or we've had guys said they were at the gym, just doing the normal workout. And then the call came and I feel like that's almost the better way than sitting around stressing about, unless you know, you're a, a surefire lock for that, that day one, day two. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like that's the way to go about it. Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, it was even still playing video games. It was still stressful, but it did help take my my mind off of things. Um, but I was only with I think my mom was only at home at the time. So she was the only one that uh, got to hear the phone call and everything. But it was mom got the cool. big hug. She got the big hug. Yeah, huh? She did. She did <laughs> that. and My dogs. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, you know, uh, you currently this last season, you're playing uh, you're playing in Iowa, correct? Yes, sir. All right. So I see for the career, man, 24 and 17 with a 3.22 ERA and 318 innings. But in Iowa specifically found a groove six and two uh, during your time there. Um, you know, what is it that you have been doing that you have found success in lately with your pitching? Uh, believe it or not, I became a starter again. <laughs> <laughs> I transferred from the bullpen to the starting role, and for some reason, that made all the difference in the world. Um, I started thinking more pitching-wise, how I could last longer. Um, how to Even with the pitch clock, I tried to mix up my timing a lot. Um, quick pitch, slow leg lift, medium, you know, mix up my looks, mix up my holds. And I got comfortable throwing anything in any count. So I wasn't I wasn't scared to throw my change up or my slaughter and a three two, three one, three oh, two oh count, you know? Right. And it, I think it was those things mainly that got me comfortable and I guess put some more confidence in me to to allow me to have some more success. And uh yeah, the the last couple months in Iowa were really, really good and I appreciate uh the Cubs for giving me that opportunity. So, so would you say, you know, obviously to, you say get put back as a starter to get put in the bullpen. Do you think, I mean, that gave you a little chip on your shoulder too? Um, yes and no. Like I had, I had a few rough outings in the bullpen, especially at the beginning of the year. It's going through some, some shoulder issues, but, uh, when I came back, it was like, I would have a good outing and then not a great outing and then a good outing and then not a great outing. And then when I got put into the starting role, it was like good outing, good outing, good outing, good. Out. It just kept going. And I was like, wow, OK, I could get used to this. This is nice. And I think the the schedule part as well, like knowing when I throw mm -hmm. was was a big factor in, in the success. So yeah. it was a uh, I definitely had a chip on my shoulder, though, it being my last year. Um, 
of, of my contract with the Cubs. So I, I was out to prove something and uh, out to prove that I could uh, be a big league pitcher if possible. Yeah, and so that's where I wanted to go next. You know, being able to have success at that level, um, what do you feel like is the one thing you really need to improve on that will get you to the show? Because, I mean, you're right there. So, I mean, there's always that room for improvement. What's that one thing that you feel like you need to do? Um, as much as I hate to say it, throw harder. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I if it was I, just easier to do, right? Exactly, exactly. Uh, if I've been told by them, by the Cubs, my whole entire seven years I was with them, hey, just throw a little harder, just throw a little harder, just throw a little harder. And I'd come back throwing the same every year. And – I mean, I had a little spurt in 19 where I was throwing harder. I was up to 97, and uh, I wasn't consistent. I only touched it. But uh, I had a couple outings where I was like four or five touching six, and I was like, okay, well, here it goes. And then 2020 happened. I actually came into spring training throwing the hardest I've ever thrown in spring training. I was up to 94 there. And then, of course, COVID happened, and – things went right back down to square one in 2021 so yeah i think if i could just throw a little harder you know be a 92 to 94 guy instead of a 89 to 92 guy then uh i think that a lot more teams would be interested in giving me that shot when dallas said meet him at the weight room he'll get you there <laughs> <laughs> Come so, on, Wyatt. Come on. So, so Dallas, my question I'm, for you. I've seen how hard Dallas throws. <laughs> so, Dallas, my question for you, man. Uh, a lot of these guys we talk to when they're going through rehab, they're able to uh, – it's one thing to uh, – you know, what you learn from the doctors and everything, but talk to other players uh, who are rehabbing or maybe who have went through rehab. Have you got to pick the brain of any guys who have went through the same injury as you and just find out how they were able to come back successfully? Yeah, so Dalton Jeffries, who's with the A's, he was up on the big league team and everything. Right before I had surgery, the day before, I was like, hey, man, I'm about to have Tommy John surgery. Is there anything that you recommend that I do, or how would you get through it? And he gave me some good advice. He was like, every day that once you start throwing, just write down how you felt, what helped you, what cues, just write down your feelings, all that good stuff. And so I've kept a journal throughout it all, like the days, like, hey, today didn't feel good. Here's why. Okay, the next day, here's here's what I did. This was what felt good. And so it's just basically understanding, too, like when you go through Tommy John, you're not going to have good days every day. You've got to learn how to be uncomfortable. you got to be comfortable being uncomfortable some days because you, you have a new arm and you're trying to figure out, oh, is this going to hurt or is this going to feel better? But you got to, like I said at the beginning, you got to just trust the process and know like, hey, if I do what they're telling me to do, I will be better. And so I talked to him, um, Keegan James, obviously, right. who had it before me. I talked to him, and he said the same thing. He was like, dude, I didn't feel 100% until a year and a half later. But it was like, you just can't give up. You got to keep pushing, and you got to understand, like, your arm's not the same, but you can't let it get into your mind that it's not the same. So I went into the whole process of, like, I basically got a robotic arm. Let's let's get after it. You know, like if it breaks, it breaks. Is it is so? That, it's funny you say if it breaks, it breaks. Is there any fear that first time you cut it loose? Do what? Say that again. Is there any fear that first time you like really just cut it loose? Honestly, the first throw that I ever made coming after uh coming off TJ, it was a little nerve wracking. I was like, dude, I, I don't know how to do this anymore. But the very next day, two days later, I played catch and it was. It was great. I was hitting them in the chest and everything. But it wasn't until about, I don't know, I got into bullpens around month eight. But it wasn't until about a year I was able to, like, you know, fully pitch, throw all my pitches and everything. And I wasn't really scared because, like I said, like, I made sure that I did everything to the T with my arm care, with my conditioning, with my diet, with my lifting, that I wasn't really fearful of it, like, I knew that God had my back no matter what. If it, it was going to hurt, if it wasn't going to hurt, I, I trusted him throughout the entire process. So I wasn't really scared. I was more excited to see what my work is going to do for me. Yeah, so same question I asked Wyatt. You know, for you, it's obviously a little different with where you're at. 
but you know, you obviously are throwing every day you're, you're getting training. Um, what is the one thing that you feel like with where you're at right now, that is the biggest thing you need to improve upon to be able to climb that ladder in the A's organization? Yeah. So for me, it's just being consistent. Um, that's with any baseball player, lowering the walks, filling up the strike zone, getting guys out. Um, that's how you succeed at, at baseball, get guys out as a pitcher, right? Sometimes you may not have the velocity. Sometimes you do, but if on those days, can you just get people out? And that's what organizations are looking for guys who can go in there, get people out, be consistent day in and day out. So for me, it's lowering the walks and then trusting my pitches can get other guys out. You know, it's me versus them. Let's get after it. Yeah. Pretty simple when you break it down. So, you yeah. know, obviously we did the minor league talk, you know, we did the friendly portion, but this show is called friends or foes for a reason. And, it's the ninth episode, and man, the Ole Miss guests have set the bar high. Even for LSU guy like me, man, I have to say the Ole Miss guys have have been the best episode. So, uh, the key is they've not held back, man. They've uh, they've had fun yeah. with, it, with this section. You know, these are questions that we've came, uh, we've gotten together with the fans, the things that they really want to know, and uh, we'll start every question. You both will get it. Wyatt, I'll let you go first each time. And uh, and so right out the gate, man, of all your teammates that you had at Ole Miss, White, if you could pick who you'd want to strike out the most on the big stage, who is it? Oh, Jesus. That's hard. Who I'd want to, that is a tough one. Um, well, that's why I brought up the Landon Sims one. He had no hesitation. He knew exactly who it was because he said Justin Poskew – had, had gave him that crap in the shower about he was easy to hit off of. So he uh, he was ready, locked and loaded. Uh, I mean, I would have to go with the opponent that always seemed to hit me the best, and that was Colby Bortles. Um, you know, it was always fun to face him during the fall uh, because it was like I'd, I'd get him one and he'd get me the next. He'd hit a double, I'd strike him out. He'd look silly on one and then he'd smoke one back up the middle at me and you know it was always just a really fun battle with him every single time that I, I faced him and uh he always said that he hated facing me but that's a <laughs> that's a lie there's no chance he he was the only he was one of the only ones that was consistently getting hits off of me henry had a few uh that he would uh definitely stroke me but man it was just cold it was like every time Every time I faced him, it was like, I, I cannot walk him, and I got to strike him out. I got to. I have to. It, I put so much pressure on myself, and, uh, I mean, when I got it, it was it was very nice. But, uh, I mean, when a guy hits 500 off of you, it doesn't feel good. Right. <laughs> and most of them are doubles, and he even hit a triple off me. Colby Bortles hitting a triple off of me. What the mm-hmm. heck is that about? I mean, Speak he's a big dude. He's not very really fast either. <laughs> he's, he's getting you. So just that right. was a that was a little bit of a dagger to the chest there. But uh, he he's definitely the one that I would want to want to strike out in front of uh in front of everybody because uh like I said, he was probably my my toughest out in in college against you know teammates. Yeah, no doubt. So for you, Dallas, who is it? Uh, for me, it would have to be Henry Lartigue. I couldn't get him out to save my life when I was a freshman. And he was a junior. Like he, I know he. I think the first time I ever faced him in uh, fall scrimmages, or it may have been uh, spring scrimmages, uh, he hit home runs off of me left and right. He's like I couldn't <laughs> get that dude out either. He just barreled everything gap to gap, and I was like, I can't get this man out. But uh, definitely on the big stage, like what I was saying, I would definitely like to get him. Yeah. And I mean, you know, obviously the whole iron sharpens iron mentality. One of the best parts about playing for a team like Ole Miss, you know, I've I've been to a lot of the uh, these scrimmages, you know, they call them spring scrimmages. Obviously, it's been cold while I'm out there in the winter scrimmages, but you're going best on best when you're playing against your teammates. And so it really just I mean, you can't say enough because, you know, while these guys are succeeding against you, they're ultimately your teammate and you want them to thrive. And so, um, you know, you feel good about yourself. And if they're hitting off you, you feel good about them going into hitting off other people. So that, that's always the Absolutely. interesting dynamic of the, the inner squads, right? Because you want to be successful, but you want them to be successful. But when you're going best on best, it always makes you feel good. And so, you know, like when I'm down there, uh, been down there watching Ole Miss, you know, it, Hunter Elliott did, you know, 
I watched him have the worst first inning I've ever seen him. And I watched him through high school the other day. But the the flip side was the the Ole Miss batters were hitting, right? So like mm-hmm. you you gotta you gotta take what you take from it. But hopefully y'all get y'all's exactly. opportunity against those guys and uh it goes your way. Wyatt, you know, you say he's he's like five hundred against you. Hopefully, uh, you know, <laughs> we can bring that down. <laughs> Well, I, th- I think he's he's done playing, but uh, I think I'd have him now. Ah. I, I, think I, I think I'd know how to pitch him now. <laughs> see, that, that's where he went down. So he picked a guy that he knows he's not going to have to face. So I see what he hey, did. I, 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 picked I, the have, same, uh, I picked Henry, and he's not playing anymore. I, I have another one as well that I just thought of, um, if you want to hear it, you know. Yeah, go ahead. Um, who's definitely still playing, who's in the big leagues with the, uh, with the Marlins now, and that's Nick Fortes. He uh, – mm. He was one that heck he might he might have hit me better than than Colby did, but he was never he didn't do much damage. He was a singles guy. He he just crushed the ball in the six hole every time, and man, it didn't matter what you threw him. He was he was gonna barrel it, and it would be right in the six hole every single time. I mean, it, whether it was ground ball, liner, doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, he was definitely one of, the, and he was a freshman when I was a junior, so it wasn't like. You know, it was junior versus junior, or you know, older versus older. He was he was fresh meat. Did he, did he, he was, talk any he smack kinda, to you? He didn't actually. Fortes, one of them, probably one of my favorite uh, uh, um, dugout guys. He was he was hilarious. Um, in fact, we actually <laughs> my nickname for him was actually Fartes because uh, he, he passed gas so much in the dugout <laughs> and. Uh, it, it, we just always had a good time, but when he was hitting against me, it was uh, it was he was a nightmare to face. He really was. You could you could throw one an inch off the ground and he was going to hit it if he swung at it, you know. Or you could throw one up at his eyes and same thing. He was he was just a a good overall hitter, and obviously it shows, you know, where he's at right now. Yeah. But he'd be another one I'd love to I'd love to face again because from what I see is he's gained a little pop now. So uh, so I'd like to see if he uh, he's got a still in him against me <laughs> you, you, better get that velo, you better get that velo up then you're talking about <laughs> hey i'm a crafty lefty now so <laughs> <laughs> hey dallas i got i got a question you know obviously we're talking old miss teammates but you know if it, we're saying not old miss is it is it austin would austin be the ultimate strikeout for you austin like me facing austin yeah, Austin Riley. Would he would he be he the guy you'd want to strike out the most? I mean, you dug a grave for Excellent. the guy. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, look at who he is now. He's he's a freaking World Series winner. I mean, I would like to get him, you know what I mean? But he would probably get the best of me right now. No, you but got a bionic he, you got a bionic arm now. It's, it's true, tough. true. Yeah, but no, I would well, I didn't really get to face him much in high school and stuff, you know. Uh, but I would definitely like to face him now and see what I could do. You'll you'll appreciate when we had uh when we had Cameron James and Josh Hatcher on here, um, just to get a laugh out of Cam when we asked Hatcher who he would hit, want it because we we flip it for the batters who he'd want to hit a bomb off the most. He said Keegan just for fun. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know, interesting uh, question right here because y'all have a different view, you know, uh, as pitchers. Wyatt, in the time that you were at Ole Miss, who was your favorite guy on the team you like to watch hit home runs? I bet I can answer that. <laughs> J.B. Woodman, for sure. Yep. <laughs> he was – man, I mean, it was just fun. It was it was fun watching him hit – because he hit the ball. He hit line drives. He did he hit balls that were 300 feet in the air over the fence. I remember specifically at Georgia, he hit a two-in-one game. And the first one he hit was – I swear he probably could have hit a plane if, if it was flying by. He hit that thing so high it was unbelievable. But uh, he was definitely a fun one to watch because he a lot of times went down and got the ball. Like he would, it looked like the ball was about to bounce and he'd reach down there and crush it. It was I don't know. It was something about him that was so intriguing to watch. It was almost like you knew it was about to happen too, especially you know in 2016. It was. It's like every game you're like, well, JB's going to hit one today. Well, JB's going to hit one today. And you feel good about that if you're the pitcher on the mound too. Like, hey, I got some backup coming and run support. Oh, yeah. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Dallas, what about you? 
Uh, definitely what why I said JB Woodman. I mean, we called him Superman at Ole Miss because he called everything in the outfield and he hit everything out. Um, yes. And he was also a good person too. Like it, it was just mm-hmm. ridiculous that year. Um, I mean, also playing with Thomas Stillard, um, that lefty swing when he hit it out into right field. Um, it was pretty sweet to see the ball just jumped off of his bat. But I would say lefty swings would is what I like to see. <laughs> Yeah, no doubt. Did you happen to see uh, that video I posted of the uh, three home runs of Taiwan Malone the other day, Dallas? Yeah, I did get to see that. I mean, that I man hit would... one to left, center, and right. He made sure he hit out <laughs> every part of the park, and two of them left it completely. And it was kind of like Wyatt said, could have hit a plane. That dude is, yeah. is tanks. He's trying to put himself in the lineup. <laughs> You know, people are like, oh, he's just a football player. I don't know, man. I think he might want to cut football loose and focus on baseball the way he's hitting that ball. I know. I know. I, I would definitely be intimidated to see that man in the box. Yeah, I think uh, – <laughs> I don't know what Coach B – I hadn't seen the lineup roll out yet, but if he's not in the DA spot, I'd be really, really surprised. Yeah. But, uh, you know, speaking of, uh, you know, current guys, obviously taking it back to last year, the championship run, man, like – uh. Wyatt, I don't know how much you get to watch with yourself playing, but with what you did get to watch, was there a favorite guy on the team that you just like to watch, whether it was a hitter or a pitcher? Uh, yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, I have a pitcher and a and a hitter that I enjoyed to watch the most. the most. Um, pitcher wise, obviously, it was Elliot. You know, being a, a crafty lefty like myself, seeing him, and a lot of people compare him to me for something. Like I'd get. I'd get messages on Instagram, on Facebook, and be like, I didn't know you came back and played. Hmm. I was like, that's, I mean, that's not me, but hey, I'll take it. You know, kid's nasty. He's good, and uh, and he doesn't throw super hard, and he just dominates. You can just see his presence on the mound. Like, it was just fun to watch. It was one of those guys that you knew he was about to go out there and dominate. And uh, so I enjoyed watching him the most, especially in the World Series. Um and then hitter wise, uh, Calvin Harris, he was just, he was one of those guys that, you know, every time he got in, I thought he was going to get a base hit, and he did, and he came through, um, especially big in the in the World Series. He was, he was the guy. He was Mister Clutch there, and uh, he was super fun to watch. You know, he probably doesn't know it, but I mean, I'm out there. Like, I still go and work out at Ole Miss a lot right now, and uh, I'll see them out there a lot, and. You know, he probably has no idea that I've ever even watched him play. None of those guys probably do. But he was definitely one that every time he came up, I was like, yep, here it comes. Base knock right here. And, you know, it was just fun to see. Well, and- I'll tell you, I'll tell you a fun story on the on the Hunter Elliott part. So getting to watch him in high school and, and you talk about um, y'all – the things that you guys talk about with being consistent and, and being in the strike zone. So he went head to head with Brady Tiger, who's the closer for Arkansas. And in that game there between the two of them, there's 29 strikeouts, only two hits, two walks allowed. Um, it's the, it was the best high school duel you could find, but Brady, while he was the guy getting everyone's attention, cause he's, getting clocked at 97 and everything, right. He's, he's running a lot of full counts. He's having trouble with his command, whereas Hunter sitting them down on three pitches every time. Right. And, and it was just, it was one of those things to watch. It, he wasn't electrifying people as much as Brady because he didn't maybe have, you know, his curveball wasn't as nasty. He wasn't throwing as hard, but he was just doing what he needed to do. He was commanding the zone. He was putting it right on the corners and, and just, you know, the guys were just, sitting on it and uh and from there when he came in as a freshman I I had predicted I said this guy's going to be a a weekend starter for this team and nobody really knew who he was outside of the guys who were getting to watch him in you know high school and so those people agreed with me but the people who didn't know is like I don't see a freshman starting you know and sure enough there there he was on in the SEC and on the biggest stage that he's he's definitely good oh 100 percent 100 percent he's uh He's nasty. Um, he's definitely made a name for himself out there, and and he's he's put the uh, pitcher pitchers back on the map, the guys that don't have to throw hard, and you know him and Delusia, both of them. You know, neither That's one of them throw very hard, but they they spot up and they mix it up really well, and you know they go right after you. They're not scared, and 
And that's what a pitcher is all about. Well, what I love about Delusha is uh, me and him got to spend a weekend in Atlanta after uh, they had won. And it was right before the draft was fixing to happen. And there's all this speculation around Ole Miss. Will will he come back or will he go? And that dude, he looked at me right now. He said, I'll never pitch that good again in college. He's like, I'm out. Like, because <laughs> you, you think about it, I mean, he went complete, he went complete game against Arkansas in Omaha. Like, he's not doing that again more than likely. I'm, he's smart. He's rolling out while he's on a high. Oh, 100%. <laughs> that is smart. That's funny though. The Dallas, so you, <laughs> never pitching that good again. <laughs> so, That's hilarious. So Dallas, so who who was it for you? Uh, I definitely like Justin Bench as a hitter. Every at bat was a tough at bat for the pitcher. I mean, he fouled things off. He. He was just one of those guys. He was a tough out, and that's what you need in a lineup to be successful. A guy that is not going to give up. He always has good composure up at bats. Um, he came in clutch at times when they needed him. He was just one of those guys that you knew when he was up to bat, he was going to run the pitcher, the run run the pitchers uh, pitches up, and he was either going to get home run, double in the gap, single, bunt. He did it all. Um, so I definitely enjoyed watching him. I always a liked lot. it because he was the under the radar guy, right? He wasn't the one yep. that everybody was talking about, like Elka or Gonzalez or whatever, you mm-hmm. know. And like you said, coming to work every day, doing what needed to be done. Mm-hmm. And then as a pitcher, uh, Josh. Uh, I know he struggled kind of early in the year, wasn't pitching very much, but I liked how um, towards the end of the year he gained his confidence, and he was one of those dudes that they were able to rely on. He, he would throw that wipeout slider that was disgusting. And you could just see it in his eyes. He was he was coming in the game to shut it down, him and Brandon. Um, and I, I definitely enjoyed watching that just because as a pitcher, as a closer, you, you like to see guys succeed. Um, and I know – that when he came in, he was he was shutting it down. I mean, he was fun to watch. So even though y'all didn't play together, by have you by chance got to reach out to him, being that he just had TJ? I have not. I probably should probably should do that. I've never what? met. What? Yeah, guy. You, yeah. You to like him. the guy? You got to give him the advice now. Yeah, for real. <laughs> All right. So this next one's fun, man. It's been fun uh, amongst no matter what team uh, of the guests. So, Wyatt, for you, which was the hardest to pitch in? Duty Noble, Bomb Walker, or Alex Box? Oh, geez, that's a that's a tough one. That's three of the pro, three of the hardest stadiums to pitch in, right well, there. That's too. Why those are the options. I know you <laughs> pitched it all of my checks. Uh, I have to. It'd be between Box and 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 Bomb, to be honest. Um, uh, and I think it was because you know at Alex Box Stadium. The whole time you warm up, Dallas knows this too. Your the bullpen is on the field, and you are spitting distance from the fans. Mm-hmm. And the whole I warmed up my freshman year there for like three straight innings because we went into extras on that Friday night, and uh, like three full innings I warmed up right there, and these guys were. Oh, they were just dogging me the whole time. And, of course, they do the – every single time you throw it. Mm-hmm. So, every time you throw it, they – and then when he throws it back, same thing. It was – I mean, I'm not going to lie. They might have gotten in my head just a, a smidge. But uh, but when I got out there, I, I, yeah, I was able to lock it back in. But, uh, I mean, and that place gets loud. But the good thing is, is I thought – the minute we showed some uh, some promise towards possibly winning, oh, that they they hated it. it was, they were dogging their own team there. I was yeah, like, that's, oh. a, that's unfortunately my least favorite part about college baseball <laughs> is is no matter what crowd I'm in, no matter what stadium, uh, fans it'll start dogging on their own players. I, it kills me. Oh yeah, and so, then and then, Bomb Stadium. It was. I mean, I had I had one kind of bad outing i wouldn't say it was a bad outing but uh you know tyler spoon hit a ball off of me that was about 10 feet off the ground 400 feet and it was <laughs> crap and of course the whole might... crowd, after, after they hit it the whole crowd spoo, i mean echoing like it made my like chest rattle like it was impressive and they do that it's like they have something for every single hitter that they do like 
something special the, for every hit. I know and, the Colin Hogs is obnoxious. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And that was one thing about them is it was like no matter what, even if they weren't winning, it was every single player that came out, they had something something special for their name. It was uh it was actually impressive. So but I realized but, as I asked this question though, you know, Duty Noble hadn't been renovated yet when you the last time you had a pitch there. So like, <laughs> yeah, it's it's that that's why those three are staying together, especially Duty now with as many fans as they have. But they don't give to your point about like Alex Box, they don't give it to the the opposition. The the place now that actually every player that's currently playing is saying is the hardest when you talk about the fans. Um, Bluebell with Texas A&M, they say they get nasty. Yes, they do. That was – I forgot I was about actually them. Talking <laughs> about them. Because their stadium's not huge, but they stack it, and it mm. feels like they're right on top of you. And, God, when they have any ounce of of them coming back or winning, God, it gets loud in there. I mean – my junior year, we faced them at the very end, and it was to it was either for them to win the SEC West or for State to win the SEC West. And if we beat them, State won the SEC West. And if we lost, then A and M won the SEC West. And I came in bottom of the ninth, no outs, obviously. Um, first guy dribbler to second base, air. Guy gets on first. Okay. Next guy, same thing, dribbler to second base. Go to turn two, air, man on first and second. Mm. Next guy, I walk. So I was bases loaded, no outs. We were up by one. And I have never heard a louder stadium in my life. That's including in the College World Series, everything. It was unbelievably loud. Um, yeah, if you got the right – because it holds 6,100. Uh, you know, it's not as many as the others, but if you get the right 6,000 there, it, it could be equally, if not more loud. Oh, gosh. And I got the whole ball one, ball two, because I went to six straight balls before I threw another strike when I walked that guy. It, <laughs> it got, I got rattled. I'm not going to lie. It was a yeah. uh, – and that's it what they pretty, said. They, 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 you know, it's it's not as big and it's not as beautiful as the other ones. But uh, as far as the atmosphere and dealing with the opposing fans, no doubt. So for you, Dallas, I will we'll even throw that one in there, even though it wasn't on the original question. What was the what was the hardest of the four? Uh, I mean, LSU was difficult, just like why it was saying the the bullpen is facing home plate. You're out on the field. You have the fans right next to you. For me, my sophomore year, I remember warming up, and all I could hear was this howling of a wolf noise. <laughs> so I'm warming up, and there's like they're screaming like wolves right next to me. I'm like, dude, this is honestly hilarious. It kind of like pumped me up, <laughs> but um, it just because of that sense of you know the fans are right on you and they're trying to get in your head. Um, but also Texas A&M, I know that that wasn't on the the list, but as soon as you come into the game, the whole stadium yells your name and says, hey, Dallas, and whatever. And, I mean, that can be nerve-wracking if you let it, but definitely when you have fans like that, um, it's kind of difficult to pitch in, especially when, a, when a, um, like Wyatt was saying, if they know they're about to come back and beat you and that energy's up and they're all fired up, it's tough to pitch like that. So I would definitely say um, LSU or Texas A&M. Yeah, and then obviously y'all played for Ole Miss, but y'all know in your own right, yeah. Swayze kit for the, for the opposing team, it can, it can get electric in there. So all oh, this, yeah. and that's the beauty of the SEC West. When you talk about the talent, and then you talk about the atmospheres, it just don't get better. That's why I like going going to all of them for sure. Yeah, um, Wyatt. So you may not know where every single guy's at. Um, you know, keeping keeping up, but like. If there's a guy right now outside of you two guys that, that hasn't made it up to the show yet, but you were to put your money on is the next guy that's at that level, uh, who is that that you played with? Okay, I was going to say, did, did I have to play with him or not? But that I played with, um, I mean, the only one that has a chance that I played with outside of Dallas, I think, 
would be Chad Smith. He's my draft class. Um, he was up a little bit last year with uh, the Rockies, and he just got traded to the A's. So he's with Dallas now. Um, mm-hmm. But man, that kid, that kid's nasty. He's got he's got some good stuff. I don't think he even knows it either. He's so I think he's so clueless about how good he is. <laughs> he's just all talent, and uh, kid throws. I mean, he's he's up to a hundred. Um, has a nasty wipeout slider, and I think that if if he plays his cards right, he could play in the big leagues for a long time. Nice. How about you, Dallas. That's a difficult question. There's there's not many of us left, you know, playing or and all that. But uh, definitely, Chad. Uh, he, I've I enjoyed playing him with with him when uh when I was a freshman in college, and he's now with the A's. And like Wyatt was saying. Dude's disgusting, and uh, I would definitely like to see him stay in the league for a while. Um, and he has a good shot with the A's this year. If he goes in there and do, does what he's supposed to do, the A's will love him to get guys out. Um, he'll stay there for a good bit. Yeah, and and that and that question is obviously interesting because you know for y'all are, y'all are the elders, man. Y'all are old. Like the, the, all <laughs> yeah. the all the guys that have came on that. have have you know gone within the last three years y'all don't fall in that in that category so no all right so last one i saved the best for last and it could have been somebody that y'all already said when you talked about who you want to strike out the most but coach b says you can give chin music to any one of your teammates (laughs) why you really you're really trying to create some enemies right here (laughs) but that's what we do with the friends or foes and it's work they love it (laughs) <laughs> oh, any of the any teammate that I've played with, um, chin music. See, I don't, I don't know. I got aggressive on the mound, so I could, uh, I could see myself doing that. But the teammates, I don't know, man. All right, let me flip this Jeez. question for you. Then I'm, I'm gonna do you a solid. Uh, we, <laughs> we had more Tennessee players on this past season than any other team with their bat flip antics and everything they do. If they did any of that on you when they came back up, are they getting it? Oh, a hundred percent, hundred percent. I w- I don't know about chin music, but I might, I might throw one behind them. They're like, "What the heck is this guy doing?" Like I, I usually I don't go for the face most of the time. I like I'd rather throw it over their head or behind them because it's almost like that scares them even more. Like, dang, this guy's crazy. Mm-hmm. Like just something like that. Um, but yes, uh, I would definitely do that to, to them. Um, their scare tactics or their, uh, whatever you want to call it that they do, that would, if anything, that would, uh, fuel my fire. I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you though, Wyatt. I was there for the Tennessee Ole Miss series this past season. They had, they had the fans (laughs) leaving by the fourth inning. They, they, They came in and they made a statement when Ole Miss was ranked number one, but ultimately, Hey, Ole Miss got the championship, so that's all that matters. That's true. That's true. Um, yeah, Dallas, but, I have uh, a feeling you'll answer. Dallas, who, who are you doing it to? Uh, for Ole Miss? Yeah. <laughs> I'd give Ryan Olenek a little chin music. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> but honestly, uh, like y'all were talking about Tennessee and stuff. I, I would I would enjoy facing them. Um with like some of their showboat stuff, that would have fired me up, and I definitely would have let them know who's boss up there. <laughs> yeah, no, we uh, is funny. I would want had... somebody to charge the mound. That's one of my dreams is somebody to charge the mound on me. Well, of course, because <laughs> you're throwing them, you're, th- you're throwing them one twenties around. Of course, <laughs> I uh, want somebody to come up there. Rag <laughs> off. <laughs> no, I got, I got, I can answer your question if you want me to. Uh... I'll I'll, uh, I'll throw some daggers out there. I don't mind, I guess. <laughs> but That's I would say funny, uh, I would say Errol Robinson, just because how if he's not on your team, God, I hated playing against him in their squads. Uh, he was just so in your face and very Tennessee esque. If if <laughs> if you have to put it, you know, just it was like. If he even walked against you, it was like he pimped his walk. I was like, dude, this is a fall inner squad. What are you doing? Right. Like, like what is I wouldn't mind throwing a little chin music there and uh and and scaring him a little bit, but he uh he would have laughed it off by 
for sure. But uh, yeah, that that'd be the guy that I would do it to because he's just he's so uh, cinematic with everything, and he's I called him Mister Hollywood in college once, and he absolutely hated it. He he got pretty he got pretty mad at me and, and told me not to call him that. And hmm. but, but that's that's just how I saw him because he was very, very uh, uh, animated. <laughs> yeah, and and I, y- y'all appreciate this. Uh, damn, Luke Lipsius might have played when y'all did. He played for so long, but he he came on the show and uh, for Tennessee, and you know he he said he enjoyed having fun and enjoyed a lot of doing a lot of the stuff they did, but he admittedly said a couple teammates took it too far. He talked about how Beck, you know, throwing the middle finger. He talked about how Gilbert was cussing out the umpire. He's like, I'm all for the bat flips and, you know, showboating. He's like, but yeah, he, as the elder on the team, he owned it and said, man, the guys took it a little too far and, and, and we did a little too much. And so, um, you know, it was good to hear him say that because that, that was the thing is it's one thing to have fun and, and, you know, flip the bat, pimp it a little bit, but you know, you, there's a line you got to draw. Yeah. hundred percent, hundred percent. And it's still baseball. You still got to respect the game. You know, it's karma. Karma comes back and, you know, you can, I'm right there with him. You can, you can pimp as many home runs as you want and you can pimp a strikeout for all I care. You can get rowdy and, and loud because Lord knows I did when I was there, but I mean I didn't I didn't disrespect the game by any means, and uh, I think that's that's where that line got uh, crossed a lot with them. And uh, kind of baseball gods got them. I'm so, I'm actually scared uh, as an LSU fan, ranked number one, and with all the talent we got, the uh, the best team usually doesn't win, and so like people are like. LSU gonna win it all, and I'm like, if you look at Tennessee last year, you look at Arkansas the year before, it doesn't really fare well for these these teams that that are dominant. And I was like, I'm gonna need us to lose some series. It sounds crazy to say, I'm, you know, you know, it's always been really recently the team that gets hot. You know, Ole Miss and Mississippi State basically did the same thing as each other. You know, Mississippi State um, wasn't weren't projected by any means to to win, and obviously Ole Miss snuck in, but. Uh, you know, dominating through the season. So as an LSU fan, I'm excited because we got all this talent. But like, I don't know, it never fares well for the teams that dominate. So, so we'll see. I'm actually starting. Um, I'm leaving tomorrow, going to the college baseball showdown. So I'm gonna go see Arkansas and Vandy and see how they fare, and then I'm coming back second weekend. Oxford, Ole Miss versus Maryland, and uh, and man, I'm ready for ready for that. And then y'all guys will be getting geared up and get to watch y'all. But with that, man, it's been good having y'all on. Um, you know, obviously, I feel like y'all paved a way for that program to win a national championship. And, you know, y'all are paving a way still with youngsters. Uh, Wyatt, that's actually, you know, Danny Wilkie told me about you and telling you how you were working with his son, Dallas. I'm obviously familiar. Um, you know, both of you guys giving lessons. Wyatt, for you, man, what's it like, Jim, being able to give back to, to the younger generation? Uh, I love it, honestly. I started uh... – right out of pro ball um didn't know if i'd be interested in it because i was like i'm not i feel like i'm not that great with kids you know like i don't know how to handle them but <laughs> you somehow, learn how <laughs> yeah exactly you learn how um but you, know, you gotta a, pick your right age group right like <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was the thing is i i jumped in with and, and dallas knows them as well i jumped in with kevin donovan and he uh because Dallas took lessons from him. I took lessons from him growing up and he's been doing lessons for 20 years now, but uh, I jumped in with his and he just kind of let me take over and, and man, I love it. It's awesome. Uh, not only just being able to help these kids progress and progress and progress and seeing them grow each year and, you know, going, wow, this kid has come a long, he didn't know how to pick up a baseball, much less, throw it in the strike zone and just seeing these guys come out and work hard and each week you know ups and downs doesn't matter they still put it out there and put themselves out there and open up and you know you you develop relationships with these kids and friendships with some of them and I mean I still have some uh, you know lessons numbers like guy from Mississippi Brock Tapper like I uh I gave him lessons when he was a freshman. That's a small world. That, that is a guest of this show, Mississippi State. 
Yep. Yeah. And, uh, and there's gonna, there's a lot of kids coming up that, you know, I gave lessons to that. I was like, wow, these kids are committed. Like these got, I got some kids committed to Mizzou, to Auburn, to Ole Miss, to Mississippi state. Like I'm like, it makes you feel a little proud. I'm like, wow, this is pretty cool. Like I, I, I might've been just a, a smidge of help in that, but it's but hey, you that's a that's a big part. Like it's a, you know, they take about it talks a village or it takes a village and you know, you're part of that village. Yeah, exactly. It's uh it's very rewarding and very uh um I um I need those kids as much as they need me. So it's uh it's awesome. I really, really appreciate it. And you know, if any of them listen to your show, which I'm sure some of them do, um y'all text me anytime y'all want to. <laughs> Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, now uh, I love when the younger guys listen to. It. That's where we'll, some of them will send in uh, questions of of things that they can learn and whatnot. I didn't get to because the way we did this episode with daytime. Usually, when I get it on night, I'll, I'll the day of the the episode, I'll get questions, and you'll get these younger guys asking questions um, to be able to learn from you guys on what they can and can't do to you know to to become better. So they definitely listen and. I appreciate that you work with them. You know, Dallas, obviously you probably reiterate some of the same things, man, but what's it been like for you? Yeah. I mean, I've always enjoyed giving lessons or I can't say always because when I first started, I was kind of nervous or like, how do I do this? How do I teach the kid the right thing? And Kevin Donovan, like Wyatt was saying, he's the one that got us into giving lessons. He was like, Hey, come, come help me out. See, see if you like it or whatnot. And um, it's been a pleasure to work with them and just see them grow. Um, and it also teaches you a lot about yourself. Um, you have to simplify the mechanics and just baseball to a phrase or a cue that they understand, which then also can help you. Like you, if you give a kid a good cue and you're like, man, that was simple. Let me let me tell that to myself when I'm pitching. You'll notice that it also helps you out as well. Um, and then just seeing the hard work pay off. You You want to see people succeed and they put the work in and they do what you ask them to do. You, nine times out of 10, it pays off. And like Wyatt was saying, it's just, it's just awesome to see, you know, kids are, and it also goes back to like when you're a younger kid and your dreams were playing MLB and it just brings you back to those days of not really caring, but you do care. And just that simple mind of, let me just put my work in and see if it, uh, see if it pays off. So I, I love doing it. And, and it probably helps that, you know, y'all are, y'all are from and teaching in an area where, you know, obviously baseball, like I actually, if I ever get the time, I'm going to do the study. It's going to take a while. Uh, I want to do a breakdown in a per capita of, um, you know, baseball players that come out of North Mississippi and go on to make it to, you know, no matter what level of college, but college play baseball, I'd be willing to put this area up against anywhere in the country when you do it, when you break yeah. it. This is just a, a hotbed and and love baseball. And it, it's good to be a part of. I mean, it's it's no different than us talking about, you know, with both you guys, just being able to go down the street to Lewisburg and watch, you know, Brady Tiger go against Hunter Elliott, you know, over here at D.C., your school, Dallas. You know, I was watching Wyatt Brock Tapper go head to head with, Mason Nichols, who is now a part of Ole Miss and, and, you know, stuff mm -hmm. like that. So, man, you get to see these guys at the high school level, then watch them in the college. And it's just, it's really cool, man. Just this area and everything. Absolutely. But uh, yeah. I don't want to take any more of you guys time and let y'all, uh, let y'all loose. But before we do Wyatt, man, where can people follow you on Instagram so they can keep up with what's going on with you and your career? Uh, Instagram handle is at it's your boy Wyatt I T S Y A uh, underscore or Y A B O I underscore Wyatt. So that's and why it makes it hard for everyone. Couldn't just be like <laughs> some guys where it's just Wyatt short. You want to know where that name originated from? What's that? It originated from Ole Miss. Uh, a lot of the upperclassman when i was a freshman called me it's your boy i have no idea why i don't know where it came from and it was halton buchanan and josh laxer those two guys and it just stuck and they're like you should change all your uh social media handles to it and so i did and it just i've been like some of my friends call me it's your boy it's it's super weird but it's stuck and i mean that's how that's how it rolled so 
Um, Let's talk about, uh, uh, we've, we've actually, no. we do more than baseball on our show. We've had Eric Anders from the UFC, um, who actually, uh, also won a national championship for Alabama. Uh, but his, uh, his name is, his fight name is your boy spelled exactly the way he just did. So don't let him find out. He might come. <laughs> hey, uh, I can learn some, a few pointers from him. So by all means, don't I don't know. Too. I don't know that I want to learn anything from him. It might hurt. <laughs> Uh, hey, I, as long as he doesn't hurt me, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. All right, Dallas, where can they find you at? Uh, the Dallas 24 for Instagram. And I think Twitter's the Dallas 33. Uh, two favorite numbers. So that's where you can find me. Give me a follow. There you go. All right. Well, it has been another great episode of Friends or Foes. Hopefully, we'll have Mike Hughes back with us next week. But in the meantime, Strong bodies, sharp minds, grit and grind all the time. We are out.